Hallo und willkommen, äh, willkommen bei äh, äh, Let's Play Kaiserreich Legacy of the Vent Creek. <laughs> ja, uh, oh, sorry, I couldn't resist. Um, and that's pretty much the length of my German anyway, but yes. This is Kaiserreich Legacy of the Vent Creek, which is a mod for Hearts of Iron 2 Darkest Hour. Um, a grand strategy game by. Originally developed by Paradox, but then became open source and the current version, Darkest Hour, was developed by a team of former modders who worked on mods for Hearts of Iron 2. Uh, in short, it's a little confusing, convoluted, but anyway, it's Hearts of Iron 2 basically, with a few tweaks. And this is a mod for it, Kaiserreich, Legacy of the World Creek. Now, if you don't know what Hearts of Iron 2 is, uh, Google it. You've been missing out, is all I can say. Uh, it's a very similar game to all the other Paradox titles of a similar nature. General idea is you rule a country. It's like a cross between maybe civilization and risk. You rule a country from the years 1936 to 1964, and the main focus is surviving and potentially winning the Second World War. Uh, fun game. Spent a lot of time with it myself. It's probably one of my favourites of all time. It comes close to Morrowind, in fact, in terms of how much I like it and how much time I've spent on it. Um, particularly the Kaiserreich mod. Um, if you don't know what Kaiserreich is, I shall endeavour to explain in this opening video, which will probably be a, an introduction tacked onto the beginning of the Let's Play, because there's a lot of stuff to go to go over. Um, so where to begin? Kaiserreich is, well, all Paradox titles are in essence alternate history because they basically put you in charge of any country you want during the time period the game is set in and they allow you to screw around and do whatever the hell you want uh, within the bounds of the game itself. And the guys who made Kaiserreich decided, you know what, why don't we take this to the limit? And they've created the world of Kaiserreich, which is essentially an alternate history of the 20th century in which the Allies, France and Britain, lost the First World War to Germany. Which had, of course, lots and lots of far-reaching repercussions across Europe and beyond. Uh, not a mod you take, really. Not a game. I should say, really, you, you're, you, that's intended to be taken entirely seriously. It's a bit of fun. Um, but it's a bit of plausible fun, which is what I kind of like about it. Um, so, yes. This is what the world might have looked like in 1936 had Germany won the First World War as the essential premise of the entire thing. And I'm going to do a Let's Play of it. I thought it was high time I did. I was just kind of re-familiarizing myself with it and getting ready to do it for really, for quite some time now. Anyway, uh, in you have a bunch of, as you can see, you have a bunch of different countries to pick from and you can actually open one of these and go down a slider and pick anything you want. You could play as the Dominican Republic in this game if you want. Paradox's philosophy has always been pick any nation you want in the world and play them however you want. So, yes. Uh, I'm going to be playing in this Let's Play, as the title of the video would probably suggest. Um, I'm going to be playing as Russia. They're an exceptionally interesting in nation to play as in Hearts of Iron anyway, but doubly so in Kaiserreich, for a whole, no whole different number of reasons. The main reason being, there's a lot of different interesting directions you can take Russia in, compared to, say, some of the others in the game. There's a lot of choice involved, and I like choice. So, without further ado, let's start. Loading screen probably longer than it normally would be due to the fact I am recording right now. So, yeah, we've got a nice little quote at the bottom from Norman Thomas. Something about presidents and what not. Uh, anyway, here we are in, in the game. I'm going to pause it and get rid of these boxes here. <coughs> Pardon me. We'll deal with that stuff later. So, I'll switch the map view mode. Aha, here we are. Russia on the map of the world. 
January 1st, 1936. We are the big green blob at the top of the atlas. And this here is Europe. And, well, here's the world of Kaiserreich. We have Germany over here. Uh, the German Empire, no less, led by Wilhelm II, Kaiser Wilhelm II, um, who was, um, as you'll probably recall, the German Kaiser during the First World War. He's still on the throne, even though he's getting on a bit, and he won't be on for much longer, in fact. He's going to die soon. Spoilers. Uh, we have over here with the Commune of France, and now this is the main focal point of the, the, the entire world setup, you see. Uh, the guys who came up with the alternate history we've got here basically said if Germany won the First World War, history would happen in reverse. And by what I'm what I mean by that is this time, after the war was lost in the West rather than the East, the West is where the Sort of quote unquote extremists turned up. So instead of like Germany losing the war and then 20, 30 years later Hitler rising to power in Germany, France and Britain lost the war and instead you have a strong sort of communist, socialist, trade unionist movement in both countries essentially seizing power because. They were fed up with the old order and it decided it had to go. Because the compute, the both both countries were thrown into complete chaos by losing the war, and obviously having to pay reparations, much like the Treaty of Versailles in reverse. You see, so yeah, Germany. Well, sorry, Germany. Europe is now dominated by a modern um, imperial Germany and its allies. Now you see all these countries out here. These are all different satellites of Germany, different, uh, these are, this is all ma mainly the land that Germany actually took from Russia during the First World War, which they didn't actually get to hang on to because of the Treaty of Versailles in the end. But yeah, you see, we have Ukraine, we have White Ruthenia, we have Lithuania and the United Baltic Duchy as well as Poland. We have down here the former Austro-Hungarian, um, constituent nations from the old Austro-Hungarian Empire. Um... Which, despite being on the winning side of the war, still managed to uh, split up for reasons I've pretty much forgotten at this point. But yeah, we've got down here the Ottoman Empire, who is still in existence at this point, because of course they were on the winning side of the First World War as well. Down here we've got Italy, which is split sharply in two by the Socialist Republic of Italy in the south, led by Antonio Gramsci, who was in real life a very famous uh, communist. And in the north we have the Italian Federation, which is led by the Pope. So, over here we have Spain, which is still a kingdom. They have a king on the throne, although that's not going to change. That's not going to stay the same for very much longer. That's going to change soon. Uh, we have Ireland, which now is control in, in control of Northern Ireland as well, and is led by Michael Collins, who clearly in this timeline was not shot and killed. You have Britain over here, the Union of Britain, led by Philip Snowden. He was a prominent trade unionist in his own right. I should note all the uh, major historical figures involved in this were real people. Uh, it's just they, their roles in history have now obviously changed because a different course of events has taken place. Now way out here across the Atlantic you have America, which is at this point, generally speaking, the America that you and I know. Although, of course, this time it's actually led by Herbert Hoover. Herbert Hoover is the President of the United States in 1936, as opposed to FDR. Up here you have Canada, which is now the home of not only Canada itself, but it's also the home of the Royalists, who lost out. They were essentially kicked out of Britain when the revolution happened there. So, one of the main goals, say, if you're playing as Canada, is actually to deal with the different factions within Canada, some wanting independence from the former British Empire um, to make their for, so that Canada, Canada can make their own path and the alternative which is to side mostly with the the uh, Royalists from Britain and make an attempt to actually retake the British Isles. So yeah, 
Anyway, that's just that's the general overview. There are other things like China is quite different in this timeline, mainly due to the fact that Germany has generally speaking inherited most of Britain's overseas colonies, former overseas colonies. China's quite different. Uh, Japan's largely the same. India is in three different pieces for some reason. Um, <laughs> don't understand quite entirely. Uh, however, this brings me back now to Russia, which is the country we will be playing as. Russia, as you can see, is green. It is not red. And this is important because essentially what happened was when the Bolsheviks had their revolution in Russia in 1917, it allowed... They, well, they made peace with Germany in the Treaty of brest litovsk which is why Germany owns all this, because it was one of the many compromises the Bolsheviks had to make in order to reach peace. <coughs> Pardon me again. This allowed the Germans to take their troops west to fight the Allies, which resulted in an eventual victory in this scenario, of course. Uh, but what happened here was, since Germany won the First World War in this scenario, what they did after they'd fi finished dealing with the Allies in the West was they sent troops into Russia, where there was an ongoing civil war between the Whites and the Reds, and they crushed the Bolsheviks. They got rid of them, and made sure that the Whites remained in power. So the Whites won the Russian Civil War, essentially. Um, Russia is now, well, a mess, primarily, but also a republic, for now. This, of course, can change, and I'll get to that in a bit. Um, a social democratic republic, as it lists up here, led by Alexander Kerensky. Um, they're quite liberal. They are essentially what... They reflect very much what Russia was like immediately after the Tsar's abdication in 1917. Before, prior to the Bolshevik takeover and after the February Revolution, as it's called. Um, however, Russia's got a lot of problems. It's lost a lot of land, obviously. It's uh, most, of, most of its territory in Western Europe is just gone completely. The Ukraine is uh, no longer part of Russia, of course. They've lost uh, most of the Kuban region, the Caucasus, Central Asia too. Mongolia even have taken some of the Russian territories from them, and over here Vladivostok is a separate state, a puppet state, overseen by Japan. So Russia's in a bit uh, of a a bit of a state, essentially. There's lots of internal turmoil, lots of different factions vying for power, and Kerensky, the man holding it all together, is about to die, in fact. He's getting on a bit, and he will, within a few months of the game starting, actually pop his clogs, and that will leave a power vacuum, which will be filled by any number of different vying factions. And whoever fills that power vacuum is completely up to you, the player to take Russia in whichever direction you want it to, and there's a whole bunch of different places you can go with it. Again, it's one of the reasons why it's my favourite country to play as in Kaiserreich. Uh, I won't give away exactly what I'm going to be doing with it just yet, but I will say that we're going to have a bit of a time trying to rebuild Russia, essentially. We've got, a, we've got a lot of work to do, more work even than you have to do in Ordinary Hearts Fine, for the simple reason that Russia in this timeline, of course, has not had around 20 years or so of rule by Joseph Stalin making sort of concentrated industrial expansion programs to basically build up Russia's economy to the state it was in 1936 in real life. That's not the case here. Russia's still very much a mess, recovering very slowly from the protracted civil war it had to go through. Um, so we've got a lot of work to do. And if we're going to rebuild Russia into the superpower it once was and is destined to become yet once more. So yes. A whole bunch of different ways to do that, as I said. But it's going to be tricky. Not impossible, I might add, otherwise I wouldn't be doing it, but it is going to be tricky and it's going to require a lot of luck and a lot of planning on my part, but it should be fun, because it will represent a bit of a challenge. 
So yes, anyway, that's about all I have to say for this introductory video. Um, there are maybe a few other things to mention in terms of... Uh, screen resolution is one thing I need to point out. I'm playing at my native monitor's resolution at the moment. I have quite a big monitor, and I prefer to do it that way for the simple reason that I paid a fair amount of money for it, and I like to get my money's worth out of it. However, I can appreciate that uh, this does, on YouTube, certainly make it a little bit difficult to read certain on-screen text, and in a game like this, it can be quite important to be able to read on-screen text. Um, if you're not bothered by it, then well, so be it. But if it's a problem, leave comments down below in the comment section. Let me know, and what I can do is I can actually lower the game's resolution and we'll play in that instead. If it makes it easier for you guys, rather not personally, but for the sake of you, my dear subscribers and viewers, um, I'm willing to make that sacrifice. Quite willing. Um, so yeah, I think that's all about that's about everything I have to say. That I can think of off the top of my head. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be doing a let's play. Don't know how long it'll be. Probably not entirely long. It's one of Kaiseraki is a game that I tend to play in very, very, very long sessions, um, which means I will probably record quite a bit of this in sort of large chunks. Which means that I won't actually have to spend too long. Hopefully, actually recording this, and not in the same way that say Moro Oblivion has been. Um, so yeah, obviously I'm still recording for the Moro Oblivion and the new Morrowind Let's Play as well. Um, I won't be neglecting those, don't worry. Well, no more than I already do. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, I'm just waffling now. Anyway, this is going to be my next Let's Play. I'm going to be doing, updating it fairly, fairly regularly. Um, I hope you like what you saw. Even if you didn't, I suggest you stick around for maybe a video or two to get an idea of what it's like. And I can assure you, it is a fun game. I do enjoy it. I know I play RPGs a lot and Elder Scrolls stuff, that sort of thing. But in spite of that, um, I like to keep an open mind when it comes to games anyway. And so should you. And I enjoy this quite a bit. So hopefully you will enjoy watching it and may like to give it a go yourselves at some point. But anyway... Thanks for watching. I will cut off the video here as part. I suppose I will square it off as the introduction video, slap it onto the beginning of the LP, and I'll upload it first. And I will go on and get started. So, any questions down in the comments section? Uh, if you don't still, you, like I said, if you don't know what Hearts of Iron is, go go look it up. Go look it up on Google. You'll get an idea of how it works. If you've I'm sure you will have heard of at least some Paradox games like Victoria or Europa Universalis or whatever. Suffice to say, the game is a lot like Risk crossed with, say, Civilization or something. Um, it's that kind of a deal. Anyway, that is that is finally everything I have to say. Um, toodle pip. Come back soon and watch the rest of it, I guess.